Hi there. So in our last video, we covered setting up a proxy server with smart DNF, DNS to bypass geo-blocking and access, let's say, torrent sites and such. So in this one, we're going to work on point 1.1, 1. 1, which is going to be using that proxy server that we set up in the first one to use with a VPN for, let's say, torrenting or, again, geo-blocking, whatever you may need it for. So what we're going to do um, for this is we're going to just go back to our terminal, which we've got open to the Raspberry Pi, and just type sudo apt-get install openvpn. Now what that'll do is install openvpn, which is a client we're using to connect to our server. Now as you can see, I've already got it installed, so we're just going to continue on. Now a lot of places that offer VPNs will have an automatic configuration scripts. Now this takes all the actual work you need to do out of it and makes it a lot simpler. So what I'm going to be using today is I'm going to be using our private internet access. Now they've got their own configuration scripts available on the site. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to type wget and I'll just paste in that URL, which as you can see here is privateinternetaccess.com slash openvpn slash openvpn.zip. Now if we get that one, and we'll just go ahead and make a directory to extract it to. It's called openvpn. And we just unzip that one. And if we just look here, we've got a ton of files here because uh, OpenVPN, or well, sorry, uh, Private Internet Access offer a ton of servers where you can connect to whatever's best for you, more like ones better for, let's say, me since I'm in Australia. So let's just have a look at uh, Australia Sydney. As you can see, it's got the basic uh, information. It's got your certificate and all that, which you need to make sure you've got with this, um, with the actual file. So with your VPN, you need it with the file, as well as the remote address. But this isn't really that important. So you know, right now, if you wanted to get it working absolutely fine, all you need to do is type open VPN and the server we're going to use. So as I said, Sydney. Now it's just going to ask me for a username and password, obviously I'm not going to enter that here and that'll connect you straight away. So using that same method you can connect to that VPN and go straight through to your proxy and jump on your other computer and connect through it, which would be brilliant. Now where we, where we left off there was we had our VPN all set up so we can access it. But what if we wanted to work on boot? What happens then? So there's a slight issue with OpenVPN. Well, with this whole process is the password is saved in plain text so you kind of do this at your own risk but we'll go through how to set it up on boot so first thing we'll want to do is since we're we decide we're going to use the Australia Sydney one so I'm just gonna go to my Raspberry Pi my terminal and I will sudo because we need to copy it to the etc open VPN directory so we're just gonna cp au Sydney and we're going to make that etc open VPN and we'll call that actually au underscore Sydney uh, that's bad. the reason why we switch uh, from a space to an underscore because it's much easier to read and um, tack on options with so now if we go to our etc open VPN directory we should see that one file as well as the one that's created by OpenVPN. So here's where it gets a bit ugly. What we're going to want to do now is, I, I personally don't like this myself, uh, we're going to sudo nano and we're going to create a password file. So for the sake of this thing I'm just going to call it password file. Again I really don't like it but that's what we do. And we'll just type in our username and password. For this, I'm just going to put in username and password as placeholders. So we save that file. So if we list now, we've now got password file with it. And if we catenate the password file, you'll see username and password in there. Now if we go back to our VPN file we copied over, so if we go sudo nano au underscore Sydney. We'll find down here auth user pass. 
Now what this is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's the authentication username and password. And we can actually have it point to a file to do this. So if we just double check the file name we had before, we can see that our password file is literally called password file. So what we'll do is we'll open up that file again, go to our user pass, and we'll type in password file. And as I said before, we still don't have the certificate in there. So we'll need to go back to our home directory. And we will copy our the PEM file. And we'll copy our CRT file. Sorry, that noise is because I always have the habit of tabbing on that and I realise there's two different things needs to try and complete to and that both starts to open. So now we've got that in there, we'll just go back to our uh, OpenVPN directory. So we've got the basic, so with our files we've got the basic thing set up. We've got our VPN file that OpenVPN is going to access. We've got our password file where it's going to pull the password information. And then of course we've got the certificates where it needs to actually run the VPN. So if we were to type open VPN, we should, there we go, see? It's going to have an issue with this and not connect because the authentication is going to be failed. But it shows us here that our password work, um, our password file with the VPN actually worked correctly. So the only step from here now is to set it up on startup. So how do we do that? We just go sudo etc default open VPN. Sorry, we type in sudo nano if we're not completely stupid. Uh, as we've got here, we've got auto start, and we can just remove a comment on that. So it'll be auto start all. It, what it'll do is it'll try and open up the configuration file and run it. So if we just save that one. And if we just now rename our VPN to the configuration file. With permissions. We should be good. We should just be able to go now, sudo service, open VPN, start. And open VPN started, and in the background it will be giving us that error that it's not actually connected to the VPN. But that's how you do it.